Welcome back to the WTS. My name is Steve Ramsey, and this show is all about creative people. This episode is brought to you by Shaper Tools, maker of Shaper Origin. Shaper Origin is an intuitive handheld CNC router that brings digital precision to the craft of woodworking. Working with Origin is simple. You steer Origin just like you would a car while it makes the necessary real-time adjustments to ensure clean, accurate results with its easy-to-use touchscreen interface. You can quickly create designs on the spot or upload existing project plans. It's small enough that you can use Origin in the shop or take it with you on the job site. You guys, you guys have a CNC? Uh, no, no, but we have, seen, <laughs> we have seen the Origin and it looks pretty good. Yeah. So they should definitely send us one. <laughs> Yeah, hey, Shaper, get on it. That's, that's two guests that now that want a Shaper origin. So with origin, oh, really? yeah, we had, so, oh, I can't remember who else it was. It says, hey, I, I want, oh, I know it was Unnecessary Inventions, Maddie. He's like, hey, I want one of those. Because I was he was on another podcast of mine and we mentioned uh, CNC and I think somebody sent him a CNC <laughs> because he said, oh, yeah, I wow. needed one. Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's see, Nerdforge. These guys need a CNC. They need a, a shaper, shaper origin. So with <laughs> origin, I'm mean, gonna get back to this ad read. With origin, traditional workflow flows become easier and more re reliable. Uh, I'm gonna do that again. With origin, traditional workflows become easier and more reliable. Tackle joinery, cabinetry, hardware installation, and more with speed and precision. Learn more about Shaper Origin at shapertools.com forward slash WTS. As an added bonus, you can try it risk free. Now, who wouldn't want to do that in your own shop for 30 days? Upgrade your workshop today at shapertools.com forward slash WTS. Martina and Hansi are the Norwegian duo behind Nerdforge, a YouTube channel devoted to creating art and building projects, often with a fantasy and swords and sorcery focus. They make, hey, you know, do you guys have a favorite movie as far as fantasy, swords Ooh. and sorcery kind of stuff? That's a very, that's a very... Very, very hard, the hard yeah. question to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, like, if There's I have a... to pick one, uh, it would be a cliche, uh, Lord of the Rings. Just because Lord it's a Rings. classic. It never gets old, and it's always amazing when you watch it. All three of them. All three of the first series, right? Yes. All three. Extended versions. See, I, I, at the end of it, <laughs> it seems like the last, the last one of those, I was just like, oh, it just seemed like it was going on and on. But I, maybe that was just me. And then really? there was the, this new... There was the new Hobbit series, right? There's the three-part series. Oh, no, the Hobbit is We don't talk about the Hobbit. No, no, no. 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 We don't watch that <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> I, just saw this, I just saw this movie last night with Joey King. It's just brand new out on Hulu. It's called The Princess. Have you heard about this thing? So it's like no, this princess. Who, she's like totally kicks ass. You know, she's like in, in this castle and she's like you have to have this arranged marriage she's like i ain't gonna do that and so the whole movie is her just like going on this rampage through this <laughs> medieval town you know like <laughs> oh, it was pretty cool if, if you like to see nice you know Sounds small cool. women Sounds i like guess kicking I ass with yeah you should <laughs> i mean it was there was i i coined a phrase for this is like a new genre i i think it's called girl power exploitation or something it's it's like this whole kind of genre that's that's developing about these just like yeah kick-ass girls who just go and i think that the the fun of these movies is directly related to how absurd they are <laughs> now we're just re totally ridiculous <laughs> but anyways yeah. i'm getting totally off topic let me get back to your intro because martina and hansi make books armor models dioramas and much more using all kinds of techniques they outfitted a van hashtag van life and martina even painted a beautiful fantasy mural on the side of that van that thing was amazing looking by the way in fact thank you rest in peace man yeah you know the, the, the servo I mean, steering died the, just a few days ago yeah so the van is uh <laughs> We, we might have seen the last of it, yes. It might have, yeah. What happened? Sadly enough. What happened? 
No, we've had so many issues with yeah. it, and then uh, the servo pump exploded, and uh, it's, it's just... Been, it's been a lot. ...too expensive oh. to fix it uh, again. Yeah. I think we're gonna move on. Are you gonna have to just... But uh, we had a great trip uh, this year, though, yeah. so... Yeah. At least he had a, a good last run. What, was, what year was that van? What year was that made? 2006, mm. so yeah, it's, uh, it's, up there. it's getting quite old. But you yeah. know, when you painted that mural on the side, it reminded me, that was real popular in the 1970s. They would have these yeah. elaborate <laughs> fantasy murals on, on these vans. But there was, I think it was oh, yeah. back before people were like, you know, tricking out the vans with whole sleeping compartments and everything. And I, I think back then it was very popular to use the airbrush. Yeah. Oh, right. Like, they like all very... have this soft, weird look to it. Yeah. Uh, like very dreamy. Yeah. They were, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what those vans were, were used for. I guess they slept. I was probably just for getting high or something in those vans. That's all. I, that's how <laughs> I imagine it in the 70s. Is it just like smoke <laughs> billowing out of these things. I mean, it feels like that just looking at the art at it least. Does. Um, <laughs> it does have that vibe. <laughs> uh, let's see. Nerdforge projects are fun, experimental, and the videos are well shot, well paced, well edited, and fascinating to watch. And you know, one thing that they do that not a lot of shows do is they put a lot of effort into making the final reveals very cinematic and just, just awesome. So, hey guys, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you. much. <laughs> what an intro. Yeah, kind of, I got a little sidetracked on that intro there. Um, oh. <laughs> wow, you, you guys are just killing it over there on YouTube right now, aren't you? You guys, when did you start? It was like 2016, 17, somewhere around in there. 2016. 2016 yeah. Yes. So it's been a while, but yeah, yeah. it's uh, been a lot of fun the last few years. It really has. Or it's always been fun, but. Yeah. <laughs> but now we're doing it full time, the both of us, so. What was the motivation for starting your YouTube channel? Uh, well, making stuff mainly, but uh, yeah. we were both students and mm. I, I'd always had an interest for making videos. And I did watch a lot of like maker channels. Yeah. Mm. So I was uh, prepared to just film it once we started to, to make things and, mm. and kind of just spiraled from there. We never intended to to make that many videos, I, think. No, I, think, I don't think. No, not really. Like you were sp you were going to make this gift for your grandma. So you were just like, okay, let's film it. And I just thought it looked fun, you know, to make things and film it. I was like, okay, maybe, maybe I can try this. <laughs> maybe <laughs> I'll take my laptop and paint it gold and make it steampunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just kind of spiraled off from there. We found a new hobby that we really enjoyed and, you know, we just kept going. And did you, did you finish your studies at school or, or did you quit school to do this? Yes, we both. Finished. What did you? What did you guys um, major in? Uh, I'm uh, actually a history teacher, history and oh. English. So uh, I have a major in history. Yeah, and I'm a computer scientist, mm. oh. so software engineering. Yeah, so I kind of just finished my master thesis and then jumped right onto YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> as as people do, you know. I'm gonna finish that master <laughs> thesis. Check YouTube. <laughs> check. Yeah. <laughs> <Indeed>. <laughs> So you guys didn't start on Instagram because you got a pretty big following over on Instagram too. But you started on YouTube. Yeah, we started on mm. YouTube. Our Instagram was never really any big because we hadn't put too much time into it. Yeah. But I believe it started to just get more popular on Instagram once we started plugging the Instagram handle in our Facebook videos. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's true. That definitely helped. Yeah. So um, yeah, Instagram has always been for us kind of like a mystery and. Not, yeah. not something we've dedicated too much time to. No, it's more uh, casual to us, I it's think. Nice to reach our audience, yeah. mostly. Yeah, I think that's the way I, I feel about Instagram. I feel like I, I kind of missed the boat mm. on Instagram. I started it like 10, 12 years ago or whatever, but it seems like in the last couple of years, it's just all switched to a video platform. And then I think, oh, mm. yeah, I have to just make more video now for this all the time. Because if you just <laughs> you just post pictures on there, it seems like, yeah. No, nobody yeah. wants to see that anymore. But that, that's what we do still, post pictures. Yeah. Everything is becoming this short format platform. So yeah. everybody's trying YouTube as well. Yeah. YouTube and Instagram and oh, I just had to refocus. It just becomes too much to keep up with, I feel like. It really does. So yeah. uh, if you're going to post everything on every platform, it takes a lot of time. So. Do you guys ever repurpose? But Instagram is great for photos. Do you ever repurpose like the ends? You know, you do those those little reveals at the ends of a lot of your videos and mm. i think those are i always think wow that would just be like a perfect video all on its own you ever repost those to like TikTok, instagram anything 
We have posted some to Instagram and TikTok, at least. We tried to include also a few seconds, mm. at least, of the building steps. Yeah. Um, I don't think we only repo re repurposed uh, finished shots. Well, maybe a few times, actually. Uh, a couple of times, mm. yeah. So, yes. But, yeah, it's nice. I always become a bit frustrated if I watch videos and I don't have the time to... I don't get to watch the entire result, yeah. you know, in a very slow If you've pace. watched, like, a 20-minute video of something being built, it's, it's frustrating not, like, seeing every part of it once it's finished, because you want to see, like, the uh, the whole of it, at least in my experience. Like, I've seen videos before where it's just, like, you have a photo or something of the final result, but, but it's like, I want to see the whole thing. Come on! And now we're maybe doing it too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like overdoing it. Like four, four and a half minutes with finished result. <laughs> you do. I mean, those little reveals. I, I love the armor you made for the dog. What's the dog's name? Nori. Nori. No, yeah, yeah that I was a super fun project. I love Chaotic, that. Was, but very fun. <laughs> was, it, was it hard to get those shots of him wearing the armor without him just running, <laughs> yes. running off? That was a great day for oh. him because he got so many treats. Oh yeah, so many treats, so many uh, <laughs> yeah, long right. walks, trying to like get him out in the forest, getting the nice shots of him. But uh, yeah, it was. It <laughs> you was want me to wear this sure. armor? I'll give me a damn treat. <laughs> yeah. <But>. Yeah. <laughs> what's it? What's it like living in Norway and being makers up there? I mean, it, it is um, definitely a challenge sometimes to mm. not have the same access to materials, uh, especially yeah. not the same materials that we tend to see on YouTube since mm. most of mm. the creator platform is in based, US based. Yeah. So I remember it must have been like only a year after we started making videos mm. and we had this idea for making, I don't know, some kind of Pokemon stones or whatever, mm. but we wanted to cast it in resin. And this was way before the whole resin trend resin thing <laughs> began, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't that popular yet. So I think we, we just went everywhere in yeah. Norway, like boat stores and, and hardware stores mm -hmm. and craft stores. And the only thing we could find is like jewelers kits for like 50 yeah. grams of, red, of epoxy resin. Like laminating epoxy, that's mm. just yellow and horrible and very and thin. Very thin. So, so th that was an, uh, a case where we just had to not do a project because yeah. we, we couldn't manage to source the materials here. Now it's everywhere, but back then, uh, no. Yeah, it was impossible. And it's still the case with some materials. I mm. think it's like, uh, there's some specialized stores that are like European based that we can order from, uh, but there's a lot of things just lacking here. <laughs> What's the hardest thing to get a hold of right now? I don't know, everything related to now we're maybe in kind of like the periphery of mm. the maker's fair where we're very focused on uh, certain specific elements. But I think something everyone can le relate to in the maker's fair is um, like silicone. It has mm -hmm. so many uses, casting silicone, etc. And I mean, it's certainly possible to get, but it's probably a lot harder than in the US. And yeah. we tend to just import and it's more expensive, but mm. that's how we have to do it. That's interesting. You kind of consider yourself on the periphery of the maker sphere. And it's really one of the reasons why I wanted to invite you on this show is because your channel seems to lean heavily on the art side of making more so than just making, you know, yet another coffee table or something. And I really like that because it's, <laughs> it's a lot different than and than so many of the maker channels is are you both really artistic i notice martina you seem to do all the artwork um well first of all we st we started i think we started off very similar to yeah. a lot of the maker channels that you see today like with the with the wood a bit of woodworking not that we had any experience <laughs> or any authority on that yeah. on that uh, nobody does that theme, but <laughs> 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 but we kind of transitioned, especially when mm. I worked full time and Martina had to do a lot of the content while I was at work. We mm. we transitioned into this more niche fantasy maker artsy kind of channel where we I think we really found ourselves because mm. it was really easy to motivate more projects. Um, I I, f I, f I feel like I I am a little bit artsy inside of my, me and I have a lot of creativity, mm. but I have to channel it through. 
um, coding and um, uh, different things mm. and not ma not painting for instance but very often you come up with like the great ideas that we can make together so being artsy in that way like the idea way yeah well it's it's our job so yeah <laughs> <laughs> but still does it feel any different now that it is your job do you want to answer uh, we can both i answer. mean yes and no kind of like of course it's different when it's your job like when we did it as a hobby it was uh, in in our spare time, it was all I could think about was just YouTube, YouTube, you. I mean, it's still it's still like that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, for sure, like it's more, much more challenging, I think now, uh, because we're devoting all our time to creating projects. I really, we really wanted to be as great as it possibly can. I I don't know how to explain it. Um, but in a way, I also think it's it's not that different in the, like, I don't know, everybody who is doing YouTube and they don't do it full time or it's not their job, I, I still feel at least we or I felt like it was already a job because you had the commitment mm -hmm. to your, your audience. Yeah. It's like, uh, for instance, uh, yeah, with your podcast, uh, it's it's you kind of if you skip a few weeks or whatever, you feel like people still expect you to do something. So so it's all already uh, kind of a job mm. in that way. Like I I don't think it's only about the money. It's also about the responsibility that you mm. feel towards uh, doing something. So in that sense, I think it's always been like almost felt like a job since the yeah the, the first yeah. year we did YouTube. Agreed. Uh, but it's obviously a labor of love kind of. We, oh, yeah. we just it's <laughs> you can also say it's not work at all because we. We just love it so yeah, much. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, show, it shows in the videos. You can tell you guys are having a lot of fun doing all of your projects. And it sounds like, Hansi, you've kind of stepped back from being in front of the camera. You're not there as much anymore. And what was that all about? Um, yeah, it's a bit from the thing. If I continue to make videos, where I had the full creative responsibility for the project, as we have done in the past. I think it was um, a strategic kind of decision mm. where I wouldn't do that anymore because we would segment our audience so much into very different kind of uh, paths where Martina did the arts and I did uh, like some very code and electronics intensive projects where which you know, involved LED lights and stuff. Mm. And I have been a part of uh, projects where Martina has been uh, like the creative mastermind, of course. So sometimes I jump in, but it's a bit harder uh, since we don't speak English uh, when we're it's only us. It's a bit when it's only us at work, it's a bit harder to switch into that dynamic mm. between us where we're talking English. Mm. So it's a lot easier if uh, one just has the the presenter role kind of, and yeah, I think it's just a spiral that way. And now yeah. I'm very comfortable <laughs> like, behind the camera. <laughs> are you still gonna, are you still going to make appearances though from time to time on the show, or is it is this just all Martina now? Um, yeah, definitely I will, and uh, I think I usually do as well. In in most videos, there's at least a few seconds, but not all of them, especially mm. not lately, maybe, but. I definitely won't disappear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you do all the editing yourself? Um, no, we have an yeah. editor. Oh, okay. So yeah. he helps a lot. Yeah, they look really good, really very well done. You guys are definitely going for the longer form content these days. It seems to be doing well. Yeah, it's 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 a challenge because yeah, it's I, a it's a difficult balance. Mm. I feel like finding the right balance between being too short and too long. <laughs> uh, yeah. I. I think just our videos have naturally become long the past couple of times just because the projects themselves have been so large. The, the obvious kind of dilemma here is that if you want to interest makers, you make them long. And if you want to interest the general <laughs> audience, you make them short. Yeah. Probably as yeah. short as possible. Yeah. So yeah, TikTok for general yeah. audience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, your most recent video, though, was you, Martina, just traveling, well, I guess both of you are traveling around, but you were painting different landscapes mm. throughout Norway. And I really liked that video because it was long and because it 
was about the painting, but it wasn't really all about the painting. It was about just kind of this mm. travelogue experience. I really got to see, you know, a lot of Norway that I probably have never seen. Yeah, yeah. it was our uh, it was our vacation. <laughs> so yeah. I had to find a way to combine <laughs> vacation, vacation and, and work at the same time. Content creation, yeah. but but also it was something Martina had wanted to do for a long time. Yeah, like plain air painting is just has been on my bucket list for since forever. So it was just a great opportunity to get to do that. <laughs> and when we got the the that video in particular from our editor, it was around thirty seven minutes. Mm. And I was like, okay, I have to, I just have to cut this down to, I'm gonna get below, because I do, or we together do a final pass before mm. we upload where we just tweak the minor things. Mm. And I wanted to get below 25 minutes, at least below t uh, 30. Mm. But something about the video, like it just needed all those kind of cinematic yeah. or like mood shots. Mm. So it ended up 36 yeah. minutes. <laughs> that's what it had to be, I feel. Well, it seemed to work out well. People really have responded to that video well. You definitely have a lot of views on that. It's a, it's a great direction to move your channel in, I think. Do you guys know? Yeah, thank you. Do you guys know any other makers in Norway? Anybody? Artists? Friends? Yeah, there's a few. Um, or at least in a more general mm -hmm. or... Um, Central maker sphere, I'd say, mm -hmm. is uh, Alexander Chappelle. Mm. Uh, if you've seen his videos, yeah. currently is renovating his apartment, which is yeah. really fun to follow, especially for me because all these renovation like series I watched before is based on US mm. stuff. So there's like no relatable materials or <laughs> codes or whatever. But mm. now it all has to follow <laughs> Norway code and right. Norway Suddenly materials. Suddenly it all makes sense. Yeah, so <laughs> everyone should check out his uh, yeah. channel on that because that's really cool. And there's a few others as well. It's um, a guy he hasn't uploaded for a while, but he's really into wood carving. He's called uh, Jonas, Ol uh, Jonas Olsen wood Woodcraft, I mm. think. Mm. So he's uh, really talented. Yeah. Meet with anybody? No. We haven't met anyone else in the kind of in the YouTube makers yeah. here, at least. Mm. There's a lot of makers that doesn't make videos, obviously. Yeah. I've got some real good friends of mine up in Norway, Arne and Carlos. They're knitters. They have a knitting channel on YouTube. They're like, really? they're like really? the best knitters in the world. They're like world famous. I never knew there was like world famous That's knitters. Really cool. But yeah, these two guys, <laughs> they bought a, a train station and then they, they converted it into their house and that's where they live. Really? Really? Can yeah, I, I want to see you guys collab with Arne and Carlos. That'd be awesome to see you guys do some knitting. That'd be cool. <laughs> I looked them up. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to. I'll put you guys in touch with them. That'd be fun. <laughs> to see <how laughs> knitting can get it to do finally. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, we had them on our, my other podcast last year to talk about Christmas traditions in Norway. I thought that was really interesting to find out all these things that I didn't know about. And then there's a word they they told us and. I don't remember what it is, but it's this word that you say that is a good, it's like just a warm feeling, a feeling of that it doesn't really translate to English. Oh, mm. cool. I, I think that's we're clear. I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, and that's what I know. It's a great word. Yeah. yeah. That's what I, I, I just kept thinking, <laughs> we need something like that in English, you know, just something to describe this, this general good vibe you get from you know, sitting around with friends on a cold winter night when it's a fireplace going yeah. and, and all of that. Uh. It's similar to cozy, but maybe it's yeah. not exactly. Yeah, the, and that's exactly similar. that's exactly what Arnie and Carlos said. It's similar, but not, it, not <laughs> quite. It's not, not exactly the same thing. You guys both been artists and makers your whole life? I've been drawing my whole life, at least. Uh, and I took some art classes in high school, so I've always been interested, but I kind of stopped drawing after high school. Um, but I got back into it again. Yeah. Uh, I'm really glad I did. <laughs> you know, yeah, my father has a workshop, so I've been doing things around there my entire life, basically, mm. but nothing as much as now, obviously. Mm. Do you find it easy to come up with ideas for your videos and what you're going to do next? Or is it always a struggle? It's, um, I think it's hard because yeah. we are in a way limited to what we do. Mm. And, uh, but you're also trying to make interesting videos. Mm. So 
things that are great projects might not be great videos and yeah. vice versa. I think we've become very picky on the videos we want to create. Like, w we have a lot of ideas, but not all those ideas. I'd say most of those ideas wouldn't make good videos. So the video is always, like, our first priority. Try to make a, a project that is not just interesting in itself, but that can also fit within an interesting narrative. Yeah. If that makes sense. I think that's that's your bread and butter right there, right? YouTube is number one. Yeah. That's what you got to think of first. Yeah. You know what I like, and you've had several videos about it, is your book binding and book making. I think mm. that is super cool. And, you know, I just get completely drawn into those videos and just watching the amount of detail that goes into that whole process is that is that something that you're going to keep doing? Is that just a real passion of yours to make books? Yeah. Oh, probably. I mean, I love making books. It's just there's something about the process that is fun every time. I don't know why that is, but it's just such a creative way of expressing yourself in almost the same way as painting, but that you, you can do practically or, or in 3D. Like you can decorate the covers in every way you can think of. And there's so many things you can do with the designs uh, of a book that and make it super personal and add like gold leaf and metal details and all these things and different color schemes. Uh, and it's always fun to experiment with new looks. So yeah, I'll, I'll probably won't stop making books. I just, I have too many already, <laughs> but I probably won't stop anyway. <laughs> I think, I think bookmaking is kind of similar to knife making in the way that you're, you mm. get to practice your art in a, on something that is usable or yeah. somebody can use for, for something in their everyday. Yeah. So it kind of, it's a very kind of motivational uh, thing to work with. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'd I should so. make it clear. Those books are not just a book. I mean, these are just beautiful works of art, the whole, the cover, the way it's bound, the, the, I guess, leather and all the details that are in it is, is really, it's something to behold. Do you actually use those books for anything? I would be afraid to write in them. I wouldn't want to touch them once they're done. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> I did make uh, a sketchbook for myself a while ago that I have used. Um, but most of them stay blank because I, I just can't figure out what's worth putting right. in the sketchbooks. Uh, but they're on display though. So, you know, it's decoration items. And we have given away a few as well. Yeah. Wedding gifts and stuff. Yeah. How long does it take you to make one of those? Um, I'd say from start to finish, like with the carvings and everything in leather, about a week, including drying time for glue and things like that. Wow. Yeah, and so once all those <laughs> we have an attention. Hey, there he is. Here. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, about half of the episodes on this podcast feature dogs coming in during the podcast. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> or barking or walking through. No, it's a very common experience. See, they love it. They love being on, on the yeah. microphone. So I guess w w <laughs> once you once you have that book, you can't like repage it or something. If you've used the pages, that's it. You can't like take the binding off and replace new pages on there? Oh, I haven't actually tried that. I think that would be, That'd be ridiculous given huh? the certain <laughs> like um, binding method that I usually use where you like you sew the pages to right. the spine itself. Yeah. Uh, so then it would I think it would be very difficult. Uh, I guess you could like glue new pages in, but it's a bit wonky and mm. yeah. I did learn a new word, which I've all already forgotten though, about the, the the series of pages that all go together. And then it's a series of those that make up the book. What is what is that called? Oh, uh, so the, the signatures? Is that it? It's like, uh, yeah, okay. one signature is like uh, a couple oh, okay, of pages right. folded together. Yeah. And you sew the signatures together to make the text block. Oh, okay. I did not know that. <laughs> was, have you ever thought about making your own paper? Is that something you can do? We have thought about we have it. We have thought about it, uh, yeah. I don't know. It's one of those projects that are kind of hard to... Yeah. I don't know how to, to, we would put that in mm. video format. Yeah. But it would be an interesting, definitely an interesting process. Oh, yeah. No, but I'm sure there are great videos on that as well. Mm. 
for paper making, book making, and just in general, like the really, really niche and hardcore craftsman work, craftwork. Mm. I always li like to refer to to um, a creator called Stupan. Mm. He's just uh, he's a master. Like yeah, he makes to, incredible books. Yeah, 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 absolutely insane. And he 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 also has made his own paper, I believe, and it's just mm. really like they're not artworks. It's more like jewelry, you know, because oh, yeah. they're so good. Huh. Uh, years ago, I was growing some papyrus out in my backyard, and these things are huge plants. And then I found out that you can make paper. Of course, you know, papyrus is like an a ancient, <laughs> an ancient way of making paper. And it was real fun. It was a lot of work. You like strip the these stalks down, soak them in water, and then you just pound it with like a mallet. And then it just makes it makes oh. a paper. And I guess they last forever. You know, I guess the Egyptians were probably using papyrus, but... Yeah, yeah. Then you got to grow. That's really cool. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. I don't remember what we really did with it. I made little pieces. It was a lot of work for a few couple little pages. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was something to do, I guess. You guys yeah. gonna do any more travel logs? Travel the country? Or is it just like that? Your once a year vacation? So that's when you did it. I don't know. Uh, it's it's not like we're gonna make vlogs when we travel. Yeah. yeah, but if we have some good idea related to it, like that could tell a good story, mm. then it's not like out of the question. And I think we already have something not similar, but in the same kind of realm. Yeah, uh, in the works. So definitely, some something like that would be possible. Yeah, I mean, we we keep all doors open. If a good video idea comes up, then uh, <laughs> we'll do most things. I think. <laughs> What is that that's in the works right now? Can you tell me? Um, we're hoping to do one that is kind of similar to the one where Martina went mm. away for a week on a cabin trip where she was completely alone and did five paintings there. Yeah, just more hmm. hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> okay. that's, Basically. That's, that's what we could say, yes. What do you do with all your paintings? Well... I've ke I think I've kept most of them, uh, but also I think my family's getting tired of receiving them as gifts. Uh, <laughs> so oh, recently, yay, another yeah, painting I'm from Martina. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I'm out of wall space. Can you stop giving them to me, please? <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You know what I want to know is how can I paint? Okay, I've been... For the last couple of months, I'm on this like obsession. I, want, I have this huge wall. It's this retaining wall out of concrete. It's like cinder blocks and it's ugly. I want to paint like a mural on that. How do I do that? Mm. Fix me, help me. Because, you know, it, I've, se I've, <laughs> I've seen where like you could do it indoors, but you, you get an image and you'll project it like on a wall or something. And then you can draw out mm. the, out the outlines. But Outdoors, I don't know how, how do you project it. I guess I could go out there at night or something, but how, how would you do that? Ah, oh, I mean, I, I think I'd try a projector at, ev at evening time. Like I mean, is that even the, the right thing to do or would it just be evening? better just like freehand it? I mean, I guess it depends on what you're going to paint. <laughs> and, like, and how bad um, I am. I like... <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> But like, for example, when I, I made this dragon mural on our office wall, uh, I was really dependent on the anatomy looking all right. If not, it would look very scuffed and weird. So we used the projector then just to get like the outlines right. Uh, but for example, when I did the Bob Ross mural on our van, I just freehanded it because it's nature. And nature is very, like if you do a nature theme, it's super forgiving. You can just mock it through tree up there or a mountain there no one's can, no one can tell you that looks wrong because it's a tree or a mountain but someone can tell you that leg looks wrong you know so i think it depends on what you you're gonna paint really are you a fan of bob ross did he is that like really good artwork or is it just approachable what do, what do people think in the in the art community Oh, I think he's a, he's super. First of all, he's super cool and yeah. super light. Yeah, so I mean that's the I thing. Everybody loves him, right? Yeah, extremely wholesome. <laughs> inspired so many millions yeah. of people, so he's just the most um, wholesome guy. Yeah, and also I think he he made it 
possible for everyone to paint, you know, just making it uh, not so inapproachable. Yeah. So, yeah, by teaching the, those techniques, I, th I think anyone can learn to paint. It's kind of different. I remember when I first saw him, I thought, what? He's not using a paintbrush. Or if he did, it was like a big, thick paintbrush. You know, I always thought painting yeah. had little <laughs> liner brushes, but he's using palette knives and stuff. Yeah. And, yeah, it's a thing. Everybody sees those and think, I could do that. I don't think I could, though. Mm, but exactly. I would like to try it on my wall. I would I use like, like, uh, like house paint or what do you what would you do on that? <laughs> That's a That's, good one. Maybe yeah. for the large surfaces, house paint would yeah. be cheaper. Because mm. if you're going to go buy art acrylic and cover the entire thing, then it's going to be a bit expensive. Yeah, that's true. And also, if it's going to be outside, that's probably going to be more durable right. as well. Yeah. Oh. But for if you're going to have a lot of color variation, I'm not sure what's the best way. I don't think we've had that particular like problem before because no. we haven't painted that big. Uh, the biggest we've done is like... Uh, I don't know. We did the mural in here. It's like three yeah. walls or something about, I'd say, 10 meters wide, three meters tall. Uh, and then we just used uh, these Winston and Newton Galleria uh, buckets. They're like uh, half a liter each or something. Uh, those worked pretty well. The, but I don't think they would last that long in the out in the rain no, and in the wind and in the not. sun. You know, I don't know. And when you're painting outdoors on canvas, like on your trip, is that that's mm. oil? Is that right? Or uh, use it's acrylics? acrylics, usually, because oil takes so long oh, to dry. Right. So, uh, so like bringing it back and forth, I would have to like hold it very still <laughs> while walking with the oil, uh, or it would just smudge everywhere. So acrylics is uh, definitely easier, at least because it dries so fast. Right. Is that your favorite type of paint to use for general artwork? I yeah. think so, but I think it's just because it's the one I'm most used to. It's probably cheaper um, too, isn't it? It's the uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it is a lot cheaper. Um and you can get decent acrylics for for very cheap at many stores. Um but I think oil is also very very fun. Yeah. In its own way. It's got and it's got richer color uh than acry acrylics as well, so uh it's good for different things, <laughs> I think. Do you think people are just born with the talent to do paintings like you do? No, I don't think. I mean, you might have a little bit of a head start. Uh, some people might do, but uh, I think if you're born with a bit of a head start and you don't work on your mm. skill, you're not going to get very far. Whereas if you're born with no head start, but you work a lot on your skill, you're going to get become good at it, you know? So uh, what do they say is like 10,000 hours to become a master or that cl all cliche. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, but time spent definitely right. works. So wh yeah. where do I need to begin? So, okay. I want to paint a landscape on canvas. I've never done it before. Mm. Do I start by just taking out a sketchbook and trying to learn how to draw a landscape or can I just like, boom, go head first into it? I think at least now with YouTube, just look up a tutorial, copy yeah. someone. Uh, at least I would do that. I would just look up some tutorial of something I don't know how to paint, uh, try to copy someone else many times and try to pick up different techniques from different people. And then at some point you're going <laughs> to get the hang of it, you know, doing it enough times, it's going to get better. And also, if, but it might be a good idea to use the sketchbook at first. <laughs> it's to a little cheaper. Like, rough idea yeah, of what yeah, you sure, want to sure. paint. <laughs> so I'll just start <laughs> mocking up a big canvas and waste a lot of paint. See, I have yeah. a feeling mine would... <laughs> The good thing about walls is that you can repaint well, yeah. them. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you should try that. I have a feeling that all my stuff would be like, you know, expectations versus reality. You know, it's like, I'm going to paint this beautiful sunset. And then I'm, mine is like, oh, it looks like a potato. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to be fair, I don't think that goes away because I still feel like that. <laughs> Do you really? <laughs> yeah, I mean... It, at, l at least with a lot of paintings, I see different things in my head than what ends up on canvas. Mm. So uh, I I'm afraid you have to just deal with that. <laughs> what, are, what do you think of when you look at uh, some of your older paintings, something you did, say, 10 years ago? I think it's fun. It's inspiring, uh, you know, because I, I can definitely see a difference um, between what I did then mm -hmm. and now. 
especially in the painting department. I think I might have regressed a bit in the drawing department because I used to draw a lot of portraits with pencils and stuff, and I got really good at it, but uh, if you don't keep it up, it's gonna, you know, go yeah. back a bit, but painting has definitely gotten better. And you'll, you'll look back on what you're doing now, you know, in 10 years and think, oh, what was I doing? Uh, yeah. That's good. <laughs> I, I mean, mean yeah. I think, the same with YouTube, yeah, right? I think yeah. that's a good sign. You go back and look at your first videos, and it's like, oh my <laughs> god, I can't believe this is still here. That's oh. a, that's why I like your channel is because you have that progression too. Whereas a lot of channels, especially lately, people seem to start out with a full production and they look really, really good from the start. But I love mm. looking at like first videos of a channel. I look at my earliest videos, and I don't I think like, I don't even know who is that guy. What is that? What? Yeah. What's I doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's very relatable. Yeah. I knew what I was doing, though. Okay. Just before this show, I thought I would uh, pull up your YouTube channel. But as I was typing in the search Nerd Forge, I did the autocomplete. Okay. <laughs> here's the, here's the I, I got a okay. question here. Uh, you don't have to answer this if you don't want. So I've got NerdForge. The first response, NerdForge. NerdForge bookbinding is the second response. So that's pretty good. Armor, NerdForge Harry Potter. And then, out of the blue, mm -hmm. NerdForge finger missing. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Okay. Well, oh. It's really funny to it's really funny to <laughs> to look up the I think uh, it was a time I also saw that mm. that uh, out to complete yeah. thing and I yeah. went with it. I went on Google. It's really funny because people are kind of making their own theories, <laughs> like their own stories, and it's like people are explaining what. Well, who's happened, missing the finger? I don't. Like I don't. Completely... I don't see missing fingers. Do you have a missing finger? Oh, I never yeah, noticed that. It's, I have one missing uh, <laughs> finger on my left hand. It's my little finger. Uh, it was an accident. Uh, it was at the very start of Oh, YouTube. so this is sort yeah. of... Like the very, very beginning of oh, our so channel. Oh, this is sort of recent. Uh, where we were doing like... Um, it, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't, uh, it for, wasn't... for YouTube. We were, no. we were trying to, I don't know, build a shelf or something. Yeah. And it was kind of late in the evening. We were renovating our basement. Yeah. We were, and I was going to build this shelf for the new basement. And it was really late. We, I was super stressed to get back home and uh, I was handling a table saw and my hand Yikes. slipped. So, um, and, and I just heard, <laughs> I just heard uh, Hansi, I think we have to, to go to the doctor. <laughs> Go to the doctor. <laughs> I'm going to call a freaking so. ambulance. What do you mean? <laughs> like, there's blood <laughs> everywhere. What are you talking about? Wow. Uh, yeah, it was it was oh pretty dramatic. Um, the first thing the doctor said when we came to the ER, Martina was passed out from, yeah, yeah. from getting drugs. But <laughs> but the first thing he said to me, he was like looking at me and he was like, well, now you know why you pay your taxes. Yeah. <laughs> because it's free. We don't pay for uh, it. Yeah. Like, uh, I was like, I know you guys have a great healthcare system. Yeah. We paid like a total of what? $100. Yeah, probably yeah. something like that. But did you, oh my God. No, see, now you got to describe this a little bit more because I, I, <laughs> I, I've known people who've had table saw injuries like this. And well, do you remember it happening really clearly or is it something you just kind of, it was all a big blur? I mean, I remember it happening, but not in the super, super detail. I just remember, I, yeah. I can't remember how my hands were positioned when it happened. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, it just, it happened very quickly. It's like they, that's what they all say, but like it did. And yeah. I didn't really realize it until uh there was just I, a shot of pain if that makes sense like i, I don't remember the hmm. moment itself but i remember very well right after it happened like oh no i gotta make sure to turn off the saw and yep. then i held my ha hand like this and i i'm a bit of a like germaphobe so i was like okay i i shouldn't touch the handle of the door because there's germs there so <laughs> i was like opening it with my elbow <laughs> uh just running into the house like um Hansi. <laughs> so I remember uh, everything after, but I don't remember the moment itself very well. I see other maker channels has the ad for saw stuff, but I don't understand why they haven't reached out to us because <laughs> we would be a, a great <laughs> ad read for them. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> really? Oh. See, we got to get saw stuff on that. Saw stuff in, in shaper origin. So they did, you didn't say you didn't save the finger, right? Or they couldn't. They we couldn't did. I, d- dude, I I am. Um, I was on the um, call with ambulance trying to explain how they had to drive, but also I was in the workshop searching for Martina's <laughs> finger. <laughs> so. Oh my god! So amongst oh. all the like the sawdust yeah. and everything, where is it? Because it has it got the the kickback, so mm. it had flown and hit the window a few <laughs> meters back. And so I had to kind of scramble for it a bit, wow. and I found it, yeah. put it in a plastic bag, and they did, um, they did actually. Yeah. Atta- they wanted to. They were super, super good. Yeah, at, they at were the amazing. R- Riks Hospital in Norway. The reason that I tried to save the little finger because usually it's like it's a little finger, it's a it's a big process mm. to save it, so just let it go. Hmm. But uh, we had <laughs> injury over that. like a few fingers. Yeah. It, like, it goes across so, here. So then, oh, so then they saw they decided to try to save it, and they were like super, super good, and they they at- yeah. attached it, mm-hmm. and there were like what do you call it, like the um, the oh, the the small insects or creatures, not insects, but that suck blood. The, uh, oh, the uh, leeches. Leeches. So they, yeah, the they, leeches. They used leeches, like fresh leeches imported mm-hmm. from I think Wales or something. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. To, because they have some sort of oh. enzyme in their spit that makes the blood thinner and mm. it helps uh, to get blood back into the finger. So yeah. it looked promising for a while, but they did save a little bit of it, not yeah. too much, but it, it, it didn't ma- make it in the end. Yeah. Sorry for telling oh, you no, your that's story. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least when that kickback occurred, that finger didn't hit you because that could have been painful. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> they always warn about kickback on table saws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to use a table saw anymore, or are you kind of? I, Dude, I, I threw that table saw. Out. It yeah. was a bad. It was a very unsafe table saw. We bought yeah. at a, like something similar to, I guess, Harbor Freight, just maybe even worse, like even cheaper. <laughs> like mm-hmm. uh, it's called it's called Biltema, and the t- table saw wasn't great. No. So we we got rid of it, and now we haven't had a lot of use for it. So we don't no. have one at the moment. Uh, yeah, we don't we don't have use for it. Uh, I have yeah. used other saws like afterwards, uh, like um, just handheld circular saws and whatever, like smaller things. Um, so, but everybody everybody thinks that <coughs> missing the fingers was were, was worse for you. But I think what you actually think was was worse in that period was like you had to s- lie still, completely still. Yeah. Not for move two from weeks. the bed. You couldn't like move at all from the bed. No. For like two weeks or 20 days almost mm. because temp- uh, the finger was so temperature wow. sensitive yeah <laughs> that was awful those two weeks at the hospital was miserable and but, uh, every hour they came in to apply a new like um, blood uh, yeah they had to check the temperature the, the yeah. every hour uh even in the night so i didn't get to sleep very much those two weeks and uh yeah but you know i'm, I'm glad uh we have the healthcare we do yeah. <laughs> so it was overall yeah. not too bad <laughs> and all in all think pretty lucky as well as it was a great experience yeah. <laughs> well, you, 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 you seem to be like completely over it it's like no, eh, no big deal point, yeah. the finger Nothing. i mean it, it took or, no it, while. It, it's not like it's not like emotionally were you just like emotionally just distraught for a long time I think so uh, for for a while, yeah, and especially like when making things on YouTube, mm. I uh, was really scared that people would be like, "Oh, you're a girl, you can't use tools," and <laughs> all these stupid things, you know. Uh, oh, but yeah. I haven't had any comments about it, so you know. Oh, wow! <laughs> yeah, you seem you seem like you get along just just fine. Just don't lose the right hand finger. As yeah, as you're extra at least it was on my left really. hand, you know. I'm so glad it was. Uh, the left yeah. one <laughs> but now i'm always like mocking her because she cannot crouch in in uh, in the computer games you know when you have to crouch with it's su- left like, control that is legitimately the oh, most right. annoying thing yeah. about it <laughs> i always have to rebind keys when i buy new games <sighs> oh right yeah yeah and it's every single game it's super annoying <laughs> Well, if that's the worst that came out of it, I guess it's not too bad. But 
Yeah, it, it's it's mainly the most annoying thing about it is just holding things. So when I try to pick things up, they just fall off. Mm. Or holding my phone, they just falls down. <laughs> uh, it, it, I didn't realize how much I used my little finger before it was gone. You know. So appreciate your little fingers, yeah. folks. <laughs> <laughs> really, yeah. And now you, you can stop googling about the thing. <laughs> yeah. we, all, we all know the story now. Uh, Missing finger nerd forge. Where'd, <laughs> where'd you guys come up with the name nerd forge? Uh, we asked for a new name for our workshop yeah. because our channel used to be Natural Nerd. Mm. And then somebody said, you should call it the Nerdforge. And we're like, yeah. actually, yeah. we're going to call our channel the Nerdforge. Because <laughs> 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 we hadn't really been happy with the channel name. So we knew mm. we were going to change it anyway. Mm. And Nerdforge was a really great name. So Yeah, it just, it just clicked. Yep. What does it mean to you to be a nerd? For me, it's to have interests, basically. <laughs> I think that's a good way to explain it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's um, kind of become this like stigma around being interested in certain things mm. and other things are completely fine to know everything about. So if you know everything about football, it's really cool. But if you know everything about Lord of the Rings, then uh, that's, uh, that's, that's nerdy. And okay, I guess it is. But then that means that just means that being a nerd is means you're an interesting person. So yeah. <laughs> It's a, you're an enthusiast of something. I think that yeah. that word is like, it's to be enthusiastic about anything. There's movie nerds. I heard a guy telling me he was a sports nerd, which to me seemed odd because it seems like I always think of a nerd as, as being a little bit more, I don't know, brainier. Yeah. The, 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 I shouldn't say that about sports people, but sports. <laughs> <I didn't... laughs> you guys play D&D? I have a little bit before, um, but not that much yeah i haven't actually played myself but i've watched quite a bit of critical role like in the uh streaming on youtube oh yeah uh, it's super big yeah yeah but that's it's the huge. closest that's yeah. Guys. yeah did you watch the series the video series it was it netflix or something they had their uh what was it called the critical oh, role right uh, yeah i think i watched a couple of episodes oh i can't remember i haven't watched called. the whole thing was it animated it was really good I, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, and it had all the same voice actors in there, mm. you know, doing their their parts. But um, I wish I could remember what the name of it was, but it's escaping me right now. Yeah, I watched the whole thing. It was really good. Really, I think they're gonna have a second season, I guess. Oh, cool. So, do you guys have any long term goals for Nerd Forge? Um, yeah, of course we want to continue what we're doing, but we're hoping to be able to maybe produce more content mm. and. Uh, explore even further kind of the more uh, even more niche things mm. or branch into uh i don't know maybe different aesthetics not only fantasy yeah <laughs> <laughs> but there's definitely more on the map oh, but yeah. at the moment we're kind of at our limits when it comes to workload mm. but we'll see one thing's for sure we don't want to uh, go the other way and do shorter projects and more content i think that's uh, the wrong way to go. Yeah. Yeah. What do you see as your contribution to the maker artist community? I, um, do you have any That's answers? a difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's, I, I hope we're making some kind of contribution. Mm -hmm. I, I really do because I, I do think we get a lot of messages, especially from younger audiences. Mm. Cause I think we have the type of content young kids can like and older people can enjoy mm. watching. So we have a lot of parents, kids uh, watching our content together, mm. which I think helps maybe interest more of the really young ones to make stuff. Yeah. Uh, which m might be good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I think the bottom line is stuff you do is just plain cool and it's fun to watch. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>